On top of the 250 tickets we've been able to allocate to Oxford students, we've also had guests in the audience who have flown in from around the world, including the US and China. Our guest today, Mr Dan Pena, founded the oil company Great Western Resources at the age of 38, with an initial investment of $820. By the time Dan left the company, eight years later, it had a value of $450 million, despite an 80% de decrease in the price of oil over that period. In 1993, he started his mentoring program based in his castle in Scotland, where he still resides as a high performance businessman and coach, teaching his technique, which is called the Quantum Leap Advantage. His students in the last 23 years, many of whom he has partnered with, has claimed have created a combined total value of $50 billion in personal wealth, leading, Dan's, leading to Dan's nickname, the $50 billion man. The format for today is Dan will come out and give a presentation. After that, Henry Lee, Vice, Vice uh, President of Ops Entrepreneurs and a mentee of Dan's, will come to the stage and lead the Q&A. We're very fortunate to have the opportunity to hear Dan speak, especially considering this is only the second time in 20 years Dan has done a talk outside of the castle. So without further delay, please join me in welcoming Mr Dan Penger. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, um, I probably don't need a mic, but I'm, uh, they've got me hooked up like I'm ready for the electric chair. Um, I see uh, a number of uh, familiar faces. I see some actual business partners. I wouldn't brag about it, kids. So, and I call you all kids because I'm old enough either to be your father or grandfather. And I see several mentees. Um, and uh, I see uh, many uh, uh, recent um, Castle alumni. Now, before I only have four slides, and then I I'll talk a little bit about myself, but before I even show the four, four slides, I'm going to give you just a couple of reasons why uh, you should be interested in what I'm about to say. Number one, 99.999% of every human being that has ever utilized QLA uh, in my methodology I've never met. I've never Skyped, linked, Facebooked. I would know them uh, candidly if they peed on my foot. I don't know them. One tenth of, a, of those people that have uh, utilized my methodologies, I've laid hands on, so to speak, like a preacher at the Castle Seminar. Some of those uh, young people are in the audience right now. Those 99.9% .9 have created in excess of $50 billion. I'm a piker on my own list. I'm not even in the top 25 and I took $820 and turned it into $450 million in about eight years. In today's dollars, it's about $1.1 or $1.2 billion. 
because I did that over 25 years ago. But that's one reason, because everybody, many of which, when I looked at the name list of you that registered, are not, not counting the Oxford students, the non-Oxford students, I didn't recognize the names, because 99.9% .9 of you I've never met. Second reason that you ought to pay attention. One of my great star mentees of the late 90s is an Oxford man. He doesn't brag about it, I don't brag about it, but when they called me several weeks ago, I thought they were calling because of him. He was in his third year, finishing his third year at Oxford. He took his final exams, he came to the seminar, took my advice, got on a plane, went to Silicon Valley, and made in excess of a couple hundred million dollars. Now, I know that's not a lot of money now, but I'm sure that I could cut a deal with anybody in this audience almost, like I was the devil. And you'd probably agree to just say, I'll take 200 million now, Mr. Penny, and let's skip all the other bullshit. Okay. But that's not why they called. I thought then they called when my um, general manager of the estate, Greg, uh, Craig, said, uh, Oxford's calling. I said, holy hell. Only 45 years late, Rhodes Scholar. They called me to be about my Rhodes Scholar appointment that got lost in the goddamn uh, post. But no, I was wrong. It wasn't about being a Rhodes Scholar. Although, with the greatest respect, a couple of the guys I know that are Rhodes Scholars, I could just as easily have taken their place. The next reason that you should listen to me is that um, Henry Lee, who's sitting right down here in the front row, a uh, mentee of mine who attended the... Uh, Castle Seminar about a year ago, and uh, I told him he should stay in Oxford. But I've told just as many people to leave university because it wasn't doing them any good. But in his particular case, um, and I had no idea he was going to have anything to do with me speaking here, um, the, uh, uh, to continue his education. And he uh, uh, gets out, I guess, next year, um, and he's in the, he's in the sciences. Um, so the people that I've generated the big money for are just like you, many of which are students, uh, not many of which went to a prestigious school like yourselves, for those of you that went to Oxford. And I know some of my other uh, mentees in the audience that uh, went to uh, some of the big French schools, which I won't mention their names right now. Uh, but you can do this whether you have an 80 IQ or 180 IQ. That's the beauty of my methodology. Because when I came up with a methodology, I came up with it for one basic reason. I had no money. I was flat broke. Hence, $820 as close as to uh, being flat broke as you can. Now, I'm called the um, Barrio bad boy that made it to the Laird of Guthrie Castle. I got in a lot of trouble as a kid. I'm not suggesting for a microsecond that any of you followed that path. Arrested, thrown in jail four or five times, did some awful things, and then went off to the military, became an officer, just like the movie says, an officer and a gentleman, and the rest is history. That's my neighborhood where I came from. That lot I'm standing in front of is they ripped my house down because it turned into a crack house. You can even tell by the size of the uh, fence and the, uh, uh, and the wall behind it, it wasn't a very big house. And that's my best attempt in 1993 to look like a drug lord from East L.A. When they were filming that, they were drive-by shootings four or five blocks away. Now, that's the school that I went to in East Los Angeles. And that picture is just a year or two old, where I got in a lot of trouble. I was expelled from school three times before I was 10 or 11. The last time, for trying to kill my teacher. I was bad. Now, I'm just an old man now, I'm 70, but I'm still pretty bad. And, uh, but, and that kind of looks like Oxford. That's where I live now. So I've gone from the depths to, some people say, the heights. But the most important thing is, isn't that story, because we have countless stories like that, it's how I did it with no money. Now, I did some research about Oxford before, um, as I do whenever I talk. You've got 26 former prime ministers here, come out of this school. 
you got 26 Nobel laureates to come out of the school. Now, some of you have told me on the quiet, we wish we had more Nobel laureates and not so many prime ministers. That's a whole other story. Of course, I'm not going to speak to your current uh, prime minister, who is a graduate of this school. That's fine institution. When I was a young man, I had a chip on my shoulder because I didn't go to one of these schools. I had that chip on my shoulder until I was in my early 30s until I fired one of you. And then I fired another one of you. Then another one of you. And another one of you. And now, rumor has it that I fired somebody, at least one from all the great schools of the planet. And at my 70th birthday, may God, as God is my witness, I fired a CFO from one of my companies who went to Cambridge at my 70th birthday. Now, I, I normally say his name, but I'm not going to say his name because this is going to be on YouTube, etc., etc. But at my 70th birthday, as I drug him out the door, I fired, fortunately, not an Oxford man, but a Cambridge man. And teasing, talking to some of you before this started, oh, I can understand why you fired a Cambridge guy. No doubt about it. Okay, and I'm sure if they, I asked them the same question, uh, they'd say the same thing. But the point is that um, we've had a plethora of different kind of, um, of individuals and uh, various uh, social and economic milieus. Um, we have people, as, uh, as Joel mentioned, we have people that have flown in from different parts of the world for this, and I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful for this opportunity uh, to be here today and to tell a little bit about uh, my story. Now, uh, before I ask um, Henry to come up and uh, ask a few questions first, and then he's going to open it up to questions, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to stay here uh, until all the questions are answered, but a couple other really important points. Um, when I came back from the military uh, and, uh, and, I, and I went back to school uh, with a vengeance, and I got out, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't go to one of those schools we talk about, and um, I had no background other than my military background and my East Los Angeles background, which nobody was hiring for that at the time, and I don't think anybody's hiring for East LA dodging bullets uh, today. Um, but I did know that I, I wanted to uh, make a difference and selfishly for myself. The thing that has resonated the last four, five, six years with the new generation, and I realize some of you aren't millennials in the audience. In fact, some of you look pretty damn old to me, but uh, is that you want to make a change. Frankly, I would be disingenuous if I told you I wanted to make a change when I got out of school. The only thing I wanted to change is my poverty. I wasn't interested in anybody else's poverty. I realize now, the last, especially the last five or 10 years, that the kids want to make a change. But what I tell them is those $50 billion that I've created for other people, just like you, they now have an opportunity to make a change. Create wealth, and you can use that wealth because you have more choices. Some of my stable of um, mentees, uh, middle manager, to CEO of the 25th largest company in the world, Siemens, with 400,000 employees and 100 million in revenue. A mentee came to me flipping pizzas with pizza dough under his fingernails. He now makes motion, motion pictures with Robert De Niro and Robert Duvall. The sitting governor of the state of Florida, Rick Scott. And I can go on and on and on. Now, normally, if that's at the castle, I go and I get the phone. And back in the 90s, before everybody had iPhones, I would take it and shove it up his rectum. <laughs> but now, because everybody's got a goddamn phone, now I just break it. Now I just break it. But it was more, as my Yorkshire wife was sitting in the back, it was more fun back in the old days. And um, the, uh, quite, quite candidly, I think that the, uh, the rest of the... Uh, attendees got a, uh, a, uh, a sexual charge, pun intended. So uh, we've covered the gamut with our success stories. We've covered the gamut. I, I like to tell the story of the, uh, for, I'm in Britain, so you know what an O level is, right? Okay. You know what one O level is, right? You know if you got a D in one O level, uh, it's, it's pathetic, okay? And if that was in joinery, 
Is it more or less pathetic? I'm not sure. But I've done a 400 million deal with such a person. 1-0 level in joinery. To say the, the, the system is simple is an is a, uh, understatement of biblical and or Quran proportion. It is simple. Intellectually, it's very, very simple. I tease, of course, we've got Henry with all his A's and his levels when he took them and uh, his good grades now. But you can be as smart as Henry or you can be as smart as two short planks. And the system works. The seven steps, you follow the system, the seven steps, and it'll work. And for those of you, I'm not going to ask my mentees to raise their hand, although I see, Chev, you, you could give this speech, Chev. Yeah, he's shaking his head, yes, I know, I know, I know. Helen, you could give this speech. Eric, you could give this speech. Greg, you could give this speech. Tom, you could give this speech. But they're still sitting there. Nobody jumped up and, and identified who I was just saying, because they don't want to answer any of your questions. But that's fine, I'm here to answer your questions. I can't emphasize enough how simple the system is. Because for the Oxford kids, you went to a, uh, arguably, the, uh, um, from your point of view, the best school on the planet, uh, certainly one of the oldest schools on the planet, uh, it will be uh, uh, hard to accept how easy it is. And uh, at, a, at a different time, you can ask Henry, who's one of you? Who's one of you, uh, how simple it is. And knowing that uh, one of you uh, 15 years ago or so went out and made uh, several hundred million using it um, verbatim, verbatim.